Um, so I was hoping I was, and I knew when I was landing in the first, I was like, I'm gonna get me a finish, y'all. I ain't had me a finish in like five fights, brother. Um, but I also knew she was gonna be game. I kind of, I kind of looked at her like almost like how I went into my Aspen and my Roxanne fights. Like this girl, you gonna have to hit her with a truck, like a four by four. So even though I knew I was hurting her, I still wanted to be patient and not over, over exert, overstep, and let her back in. So I was really thinking in the second, I was like, I'm, I'm gonna get her out of here. And when she survived the second, I was like, all right, she's gonna go to the bell. So let's just keep touching her. Is it tough to have a fight like that where you know, I mean, you are dominating the action and you're certainly landing, but she does continue to show resilience. And she she had a couple moments, you know, a couple successful moments. Is it is it difficult, you know, to, to, to kind of test yourself when, when that's happening? No, no, why not? Look, I want to show my skills tonight. And so the longer she's still on her feet, the more stuff I was able to show. And and I just wanted to, I just want to win. I don't care how it comes. I want, I want to finish. I want to look good. I want to land my shots. I was able to listen to my corner. So it wasn't frustrating at all. And, and I think coming into the second, I knew like like not to not to pull back on the gas. I think it's easy as a fighter to say, hey, I'm up two, let me coast. But I've seen from other people's mistakes that no, on the third, I don't care if I'm up two, we're gonna gas it. Cause I know she was gonna have to she was gonna have to try to finish. She was I heard her corner shouting for the takedown, shouting for the finish. I knew she was gonna come blazing in the third, so I knew I had to punch it. I was gonna ask you as well. I mean you did finish so strong. Do you like sending that message? I mean I know you hear the people say, Oh, can she go? I mean if you're finishing strong in the third round, is that kind of a message you want to send to people? Why does no why does anyone doubt my cardio? I just said it. Look, I went I went 30 minutes with Aspen Lad. I did 30 minutes with Roxanne Modafferi. I did 15 minutes. I've had nothing but decisions and I go bell to bell. I don't know like I went through my fights like which fight was I I think it's because my style I come out so heavy that in the third people think I'm gassing. But if you look at my volume, I throw I throw more volume than almost any other girl in the division. It's just if you compare my third to my first, I think people think I'm gassing. But I don't understand I got so many decisions. I'm trying to finish these fights like so it wasn't necessarily to prove nothing because I trust my cardio so it's just I hope y'all enjoyed the 15 and hopefully y'all get off my back about it it was it was almost 16 minutes right seemed like I had a little action after the bell what, what, what was happening there it's just the adrenaline so I had heard like before when the fight was still on for April I had seen a little clip where she said I wanted to safely hospitalize her I want to put Sajar in the hospital and so I was like you go to the hospital and then I, I kind of got excited and then like you know I, I tried to be humble I don't want to embarrass my mom so I was like oh my bad girl my bad I got excited I got excited I'm, I'm sorry and she was like I didn't even say that so now I was even more embarrassed I was like you sure but I thought you said something but anyway my bad I want to be humble I didn't I didn't want to do nothing too crazy but I just kind of got excited like oh, just put me in the hospital and then uh, and then I'm you know it was all right it was cool I apologize to her nice and last thing for me I know you said the biggest thing is just staying more active and not having these long layouts what would you like to do next what, what makes sense for you fight again soon <laughs> Is this really your first press conference? I think so. I think so. Yeah. Well, I've had I've had post fight interviews, but I think this is my first press conference. Yeah. Welcome. Uh, did you hear the commentators out there during your fight? And I, I sure did. I heard Paul Felder trying to decode my codes. Good luck, Paul. <laughs> Paul, you ain't gonna figure it out, baby. <laughs> Paul Felder's my man, and everybody tried to figure out Mark Henry codes. Um, so I did hear Paul a little bit. I think I heard a little bit of DC. I was mostly focusing on my corner. Uh, any codes you wanna, any hints you can give us on these codes? Um, I'm about as open with my codes as an NFL head coach would be with his with his playbook. <laughs> no. <laughs> Speaking of uh, focusing on your corner, you basically had a full on conversation in the third, like, was how does that happen without you sort of, are you still focused on the fight or do you just sort of notice and there's no crowd so you can just sort of have that conversation and it can sort of take your attention away from what's going on? No, so so in the gym, I'm always listening to my coaches and I'm always communicating with my coaches. I've always been a communicative fighter and a lot of times I do have a hard time hearing what's going on in the fight and, and coming into this whole thing, I was that's one of the things I was most excited about. I was like, I'm going to get to hear everything coach says and, and I like to, obviously fighting you want to do what's right and flow and freestyle and, and, and do what you see but at the same time I, I like I know I trust my coaches whenever they call I'm a throw because they're going to see stuff I don't see so I was super pumped to be able to hear everything and so it, was, it wasn't it was new to me I talk to my coaches sparring all the time so with that being said do you prefer it with no crowd I hate to say I prefer it with no crowd, but I prefer being able to hear because <laughs> um, I don't want to just the fans. It is it is different having the energy there. My family couldn't come. It's the first time I didn't have my family at my fights. So I, I can't say I prefer it, but I, I must say I, I did enjoy quite a bit being able to hear tonight. 
Awesome. Thanks, guys. Hey, thanks very much, Mr. Jarrah. Congrats on the win. Uh, first of all, just walk us through uh, that fight. What did you think of your performance tonight? I thought it was great. I thought it was one of the best performances of my career. I landed everything. I heard good. I pushed hard. Uh, I cannot complain. How much pressure did you put on yourself coming into this fight with uh, a couple of losses in your last outings? Zero. None. My goal is to have fun tonight. That's it. All camp was like, have fun, man. Have fun. It is what it is. Like, you know, you lose some in this game. That's what happens. And I knew if I put all that pressure on me, I wasn't going to be able to perform. And, and that's what I really want to get back to. I think I put pressure on those fights that I lost. Like, oh, I got to win these fights. And that's when I had those performances that I lost. I figured if I come in and do what I do best, which is have fun, box, wrestle, ground and pound, it, it, it's, it's in God's hands after that. We're just going to have a good time. And I'm wondering if you could take us through uh, that little moment at the end. Uh, looks like there was a, a little push or she took offense to something. What happened there uh, after the fight? I just got a little excited. That adrenaline. So I had heard a while back a little clip where she had said, like, I want to push the jar in the hospital. And so maybe some clickbait or something. And so I, I really hadn't thought about it. But right at the end, I was like, you go to the hospital. And so, and so she was like, what are you talking about? And I was like, and then I, I try to humble myself right away. I try to be a humble person. I try to, like, be a good sport good you know be a, a good winner and a good loser so I try to be a good sport and I apologize to her right away in the cage before they even raise a hand because I just got excited it's adrenaline you get into a fight you go 15 minutes you see somebody you see blood it just get excited so I had saw a clip where she said she wanted to put me in the hospital and so that's what I said I was like you go to the hospital so my bad <laughs> Gotcha. Now, I, I know it's going to be hard given the climate that we're in. Not a lot of events have been announced. We don't know where fights necessarily are going to take place. But, you know, given your choice, when do you want to fight again? And who would you have in mind, if anyone? ASAP, hopefully Fight Island. No no names in particular. I just want to fight again. It's one thing I, I told my manager, I've been trying to tell everyone that's listening. I just want to fight frequently, like especially now I'm back in the win column. I think I just always have these long gaps. I've been in the UFC like two or three years now, and I get on average six, seven months between a fight. And so I'm not even picky about who. I just want to go again soon. And last one for me. I know you're a big uh, Game of Thrones fan. It's over. It's done. What's uh, taking its place for you? Man, so I binged on Gentleman Jack. Um, that was good. And honestly, there hasn't been anything that comes close to Game of Thrones. What have I been watching? Um, I watched Black AF on Netflix the other day. That's funny. Um, man, nothing good. There's another show that's funny on HBO, though. It's the show where the cruise ship is stuck in space. That's a funny one. <laughs> I'm trying to think. I think it's Avenue 9. That's a good one, too. That's a good one. And none of those are anything like Game of Thrones. There's no Game of Thrones-like show. There's no, like, dragons that, that replaces it. I'm watching, like, comedy a lot recently. All right. Well, congrats on the Lynn and uh, best of luck moving forward. Thank you so much. Up next, we have Louise Green with MMA Crazy. Your line is open. Hi, Sajara. Um, you obviously mentioned there about gaps uh, in your fights and, and wanting to fight more frequent. You know, when, when this whole pandemic, uh, you know, started and, and your original matchup uh, in Brooklyn was cancelled, how frustrated were you uh, and, and, is there like a weight off your shoulders now that this fight has finally happened? Um, it was a little, it was a little frustrating, but at the same time, it's not like, I mean, it's a pandemic. So it's like, <laughs> all right. So, you know, you can't complain. It's not like it just got canceled for no reason. So it was a little frustrating, but I was confident that, that UFC and Dana White was going to make some kind of fights happen. And so I just stayed on the game. Um, and, and now that it has finally happened, I do feel good, especially because, not only just because my original fight day got pushed back, but I haven't fought since September last year. So I, I just was happy to get back in the cage, period. So, you know, I appreciate uh, UFC keeping these fights going. I thought it was pretty gangster. So I'm glad that they that they were able to reschedule me right away. So I'm just happy and, and not so much a weight off my shoulders, but I am happy to be fighting again. And we saw you communicating with your corner during the fight. What was it like fighting with no spectators, no crowd? So you kind of miss the energy of the crowd, but at the same time, it was phenomenal being able to hear my corners. I love it. See, see, in camp, when I'm training, when I'm sparring, I'm always communicating with my coaches. That's one thing that's really common to me. I like to be able to talk to them and to be able to communicate with them. So to be able to do it live and in a fight felt like um, an advantage. I always talk to my corner. So it was it was great. I wish I could hear like that all the time. I wish I could have the best of both worlds, like bring the crowd in, but then also like 
put a little mag, like a little thing in my ears. So I can hear my coach. <laughs> I wish I got happy both ways, but it was great being able to hear it tonight. All right. Well, congratulations on the win. Thank you so much. Up next, we have James Lynch with the score. Hey, Sarge, good to talk to you again. Um, Congratulations on the win. You sort of talked about it there, about how, you know, there was an interview clip that kind of annoyed you. And, you know, you even mentioned like on the broadcast, so people were talking about your cardio. Is that what you need to have like a dominant performance is just, you know, have sort of a chip on your shoulder? Because this was one of your most dominant wins. It was. I don't know, like, I think it it wasn't necessarily the chip on my shoulder that motivated me. It was my whole goal this camp was to have fun. Because Mm -hmm. I've always kind of had pressure. I've always put a lot of pressure on myself. I've always been like real, like real intense. And, and really what I wanted to do with this fight and with this camp is like, look, no matter what happens, have fun. You got to go out there and have a good time. I felt like I fought my best when I was a little bit more relaxed. So that was it. There was like people talk about my cardio, but like, honestly, I got over y'all talking about my cardio like two weeks ago. <laughs> like, like, like the media have been talking about my cardio since the beginning of my career. And I looked down my record. I'm like, OK, 30 minutes with Aspen Lad. She She's never gone to the decision with anybody but me. 30 minutes with Roxanne Modafferi, uh, 15 minutes with Lauren Murphy, 15 minutes with Best Cadet. Like, why are y'all talking about my cardio? So, like, I, I, I go, like, I got I got too many decisions, in my opinion. So, um, it wasn't necessarily a chip on my shoulder, but I did want to have fun. I did want to display my skills. And coming out of the second and going into the third, I was like, well, she ain't going to die here, clearly. So, y'all get to see 15 minutes again. And, and you talked about that there, uh, you know, Sarah's durability. Um, was there anything that surprised you in the fight at all about her, you know, uh, heading into this fight that you weren't expecting? Um, no, I, I could tell by the type of fighter she was. I always get like those kind of game kind of girls like Roxanne. Like everyone looks at Roxanne and like, oh, like she, I knew Roxanne was going to be game. You could hit her, you can hit her upside the head with a baseball bat. And I knew Sarah Morris was going to be the same way. So I'm, I'm, I made sure to stay patient and stay sharp and just keep touching her, just keep touching her up. I knew if I try to overswing and kill her with everything, um, that that might not be the best the best idea and best game plan. So I wasn't surprised that that she ate. There was some of them where she stumbled, and I was like, "You still going? All right, still here." So um, didn't surprise me. Just kept touching her. And last one for me: Is there an opponent in mind next? I know this win's fresh, but you know you're back on the winning track, and uh, you know you, you had a really uh, dominant performance, like I mentioned there. Nope, I don't have anybody in mind. Whoever gonna fight me the soonest? I would like to, you know, get right back in it. I, I don't want to take six months off no more. I'm tired of them long breaks. Um, I would like to fight again as soon as possible, and so I'm not gonna be picky about who it is. Congratulations. Thank you. And last question comes from Shaquille Majuri with MMA Mania. The big win, Sarge. Congratulations on the big win. Thank you so much. Appreciate that. Uh, now, you know, we talk about how you could communicate clearly with your corner, but I'm guessing you could probably hear Sarah's coaches as well, you know, that's asking her to push the pace, saying that you're going to tire her out. Uh, how great did it feel to come out in the third round knowing you were as fresh as you were and they were thinking the opposite? I thought it was great because I knew she was tired too. In the first round, I kind of talked a little smack to them too. Somebody was like, we know what the toe means. I was like, what do you mean then? <laughs> so <laughs> I thought it was cool. I heard them shouting loud for her to take down. I heard them at one point, I heard them say like jab overhand. So I was like way out the way of that. Um, and it was like towards the third, I want to stay focused and not get too lackadaisical. But I did. I heard them saying she's gassing. She don't want this kind of fight. And I'm like, bro, like what, what fights do y'all be watching? Cause I'm always in a grind. I'm always in a nasty fight. So how would I not want that? Like, I love them grindy fights. Like, so bring it. So I kind of, I kind of chuckled to myself cause I knew she was hurting too. I was like, if y'all think I'm hurting, homegirl hurting too. So let's go. And uh, last thing for me here, you know, you kind of touched on how you're tired of hearing the media jabber about this and that or the social media reaction uh and you've been public about you know the criticisms before but i'm wondering in that time like how has your relationship with public feedback changed uh do you block it out more now do you stay off social media are you welcoming it like what's going on because i know that can be a lot to handle no i welcome it all i kind of i was it's funny i was teasing with i forgot who i was talking to but when I was supposed to fight Valentina and they pulled me and the fight in Roxanne and I was getting booed, I was like, look, the only time I get any Twitter is when people hate on me. <laughs> That's the only time I get any tweet backs. Um, I'm not mad at it. I mean, people are going to talk about something. So right now people think I don't have cardio. That's cool. You can talk about what you want. Um, like they say, like, what is it like? Like bad news is good news or whatever. Like I, I don't I take all of that with a grain of salt. Like some, I like trolling, honestly. 
People come on my Instagram. Somebody tried to troll me and say I wouldn't make weight, and I bet him a hundred dollars, and he definitely Venmo me. So <laughs> I kind of like it. I don't. I don't get upset. Like people are gonna talk. It is what it is. I don't. I don't take social media or anything that seriously. I appreciate having you guys, the reporters and the media, because without y'all, like, like we need coverage in order to get exposure. So I, I don't really care what y'all write about. I like when y'all write nice stuff, and most of the time it is. It's just sometimes critical. Like, SARS don't got no cardio. To me, like, that's so incorrect. So, like, whatever, write what you want. So I don't have a bad relationship. Bring it on. Well, Sarge, well, hopefully all they'll be talking about today is your great performance. That's right, baby. <laughs> Thank you. All right, thanks, Ajara. You're good to go. Thank you. Appreciate that.